that women do not want to hear, but most men will totally agree with. First of all, why do all these women look the same? Second, they all generally have another thing in common, and that's that there's nothing on this finger. Now, I am obviously not married or engaged either, but unlike these women, I don't think that a ring is a mark of your worth, and I'm not giving out relationship advice. If this girl and her doppelgangers are so great at maintaining themselves and presenting themselves in the most feminine way possible, why aren't any of them married? Because with the values they have, there's no way that they are in the mindset of like, oh, marriage isn't important, I'm just enjoying my time with my partner. So why are none of these women married? And in the case of this creator, Emily, she's also divorced, even though she's apparently the perfect wife. Using the reasoning that Emily does in her video to her 2.6 million followers, Emily being a conventionally attractive woman who is still thin after two kids and knows the importance of looking good for your man, that in itself, according to Emily, should be enough to keep a marriage afloat. So what's going on, Emily? But anyway, as you'll see, unfortunately, Emily is going to lecture women on how if their man doesn't like the way they look, it is up to the woman to fix that problem. But like, why is her message only for men about women? Not that I agree with her message, obviously. But if women are responsible for fixing something a man doesn't like, why isn't it the same the other way around? Men are entitled to whatever their version of a hot woman is, but if a woman finds her husband less attractive for whatever reason, she has to stay quiet about it? And before people get all up in my comments, there are shallow men, there are shallow women, there are shallow non-binary people. That's not really the point. When a man goes to his woman to tell her that he is losing physical attraction, maybe because she's gained weight or has cut her hair or doesn't wear makeup or nice clothing anymore, the majority of the time she positions that issue as a him problem. Okay, my first issue with this list is that save for weight, all the things she listed are temporary, they change a lot, and they are very inconsequential. You're telling me that you no longer want to have sex with your wife because she cut a few inches off of her hair and she wears leggings a little more than she used to? And bringing weight into the equation, since that was on the list. I never realized how many people go into relationships expecting their partner to never change. I asked in a video about being child-free the other week if parents only look into the future like a couple of years because so many of them seem like shocked when their teenagers act like teenagers. So is it the same thing here? Do some people truly get into a relationship and they're like, okay, you're 5'8", 160 pounds, your facial hair looks like that, and that will be you forever. Like, are men really going on dates with women, deciding on being in long-term relationships with women, thinking that she's never going to change her hairstyle? It's also an unrealistic expectation because obviously when you start dating someone, you're going to put your best foot forward in every way. If you wear makeup, you're gonna make sure to wear makeup. If you do your hair, you're gonna make sure to do your hair. You're probably going to dress extra nice for a little bit. But once you've been in a relationship for a little while, you no longer feel the need to constantly try to impress your partner. And again, before people come in my comments and are like, oh, that's a sign of laziness. No, it's a sign of being comfortable around your partner. And as it turns out, that includes weight gain. It has been scientifically proven that the happier you are in your marriage, the more likely you are to gain weight. It is a legitimate biological sign that you are happy with the person that you're with and you are not planning on skipping off with someone else. And as far as makeup, clothes, hair, when you're more relaxed with someone, you're more lax about those things. Especially like once you're living with someone, do men expect women to sleep in their makeup and like wake up with it perfect? And so sorry that on Saturday when I'm like chilling at home, I'm not wearing my ball gown. And this is multiplied by a factor of a thousand when kids are involved. When you're a stay-at-home mom looking after a toddler, what's the point of curling your hair, putting on a full face of makeup, and wearing a super snappy outfit? It could get completely ruined, and at the very least, it's probably uncomfortable. And like, why would a man expect his wife to do that? I'm sure that men with long hair also pull their hair back when they're doing things, because long hair gets in the way. He's being mean, superficial, unsupportive, and maybe as far as his fault. I mean, if you're suddenly unattracted to your wife because she cut her hair, yeah, you are mean and superficial. Was it in your wedding vows that you'd only stay with her if she had her hair a certain style? And maybe you don't know this, but hair grows back, but people are allowed to experiment with their own hair. And men, do you know why a lot of women cut their hair short after they have kids? Because they don't have time to wash and style super long hair. Maybe if you helped out with the kids a little more, she'd be able to do that. 
Same thing goes for weight gain and the gym. How is your wife, who pushed a baby out of her body for you, supposed to lose weight if she can't get to the gym and all she has to eat are the remnants of whatever your children didn't eat that afternoon? So yeah, if you're an unsupportive partner, some of the things that you're complaining about are your fault. It is very rare, I don't think it ever happens, where a woman will actually take in that information and make changes to her lifestyle. Did she seriously say that it never happens that women try to better themselves after their husbands give them criticism? Are you fucking serious? And then Emily ends the video by saying that men, on the other hand, when they're given criticism by their partner, they immediately hop to it. They drop 30 pounds in like two days because that's how much they love their wives. I don't have stats on this, but I'm gonna say that plenty of men and plenty of women, when they get criticism from their partner, try to address what their partner's talking about. And then of course, plenty of men and women don't. Of course, there's also still the question, does the person who is supposed to change have the time or resources to do so? And there were some stellar comments on this video that I also wanted to talk about. So John Peterson says that a woman gaining 50% of her weight is insane and unacceptable unless she has a health condition. Fora Hillarm chimes in and says, yeah, everyone gets older and flabbier, but you'd better not get fat. But if you do get fat, it's okay if it's genetics or an illness or something. So my question for these men then is, what's the difference? I have also asked this in every video I've made about fat phobia and have yet to be given an answer. When you comment out on their fat phobia, they'll be like, it's a preference. People are allowed to have preferences. Yeah, of course they are. There are body types in men that I'm not particularly attracted to either. But the issue here is the dichotomy. Let's say you have a partner who gains weight, she becomes unattractive to you, but she doesn't want to lose weight. These men will say, well, I'm not attracted to fat women, therefore I'm not attracted to my wife when she's fat. But in their comments, both of these men say that if their wife wants to lose weight but can't due to health or whatever, then that's fine. They're fine with her body, which means that her being fat isn't the problem. Because if they were deterred by fat, it wouldn't matter whether the wife was trying to lose weight or had a genetic condition or not, she's still fat. And then you have the standard excuse of, but what if I'm just like really concerned for her health? Okay, valid. But if your partner goes to the doctor and while fat is given a clean bill of health from that doctor, you will drop the issue, correct? If her health was truly the only reason that you were talking to her about her weight, well, congrats, your wife is healthy. Go have sex now that that stress has been alleviated. I, I just, I don't understand this. My previous partner's bodies have changed and I found them attractive no matter what their body looked like. But in regards to my first long-term partner in my early 20s, who by the way was not really a conventionally attractive person, but I found them very attractive until they became abusive. And then all of a sudden, I could not see anything attractive physically about them. They were the ugliest person on earth to me. So I guess what I want to say to these men mostly is just give your partner a heads up that you think like this. Tell them, if you get fat, I will leave you. Tell them, your personality means nothing to me if it is covered by an arbitrary amount of fat. And see how long they stick around.